So in the world of tomorrow, all tasks will be repetitive, predictable, will be taken over by machines. So every task that is predictable and repetitive will be taken over by robots or machines. This is the Amazon warehouse in the early days, a lot of people working there, and now robots took over these repetitive, predictable tasks. Um, this, is a, this is a greenhouse, and there's a camera watching the tomato. You see the figures? These are percentages below the tomato. And when the tomato is ready, it sends a signal to a robot, and the robot picks it. So all those repetitive, predictable tasks would be done by robots. No people, but robots. Um, but we're not there, you know, it's not done. <laughs> so we need time. We need loads of time to build it. It's not ready. So um, in 2025, according to the predictions, half of all the jobs, half, so 50%, will be taken over by a robot, a device, or an algorithm. 50%. Now, globally, it's 37%. So we're heading. The supply chain is wonderful, but it's also really costly. And we lose a lot of money in the supply chain, which is around 40%, because factories are broken down, we have traffic problems, you know, uh, there's no storage. There's, uh, there's always something wrong why these supply chains stop working, you know? So we lose a lot of money in the supply chain because not all the dots are connected. Um, out of 1,000 supply chain executives, this was recently done by Oxford last year, 51% they used predictive analytics to solve this problem, 51%. But the other one, they don't use it. So this is a big opportunity to use AI to connect all the dots. So let me tell you a bit about the dots. This is a self-driving lorry. This is a concept from Mercedes. And it drives, and halfway, it exchanges a part of the lorry and it runs. So the, 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 the first one goes to Guadalajara, and the other one goes to Mexico City, and halfway they exchange their lorries. They don't have to stop. They just exchange. Secondly, we see a concept of a factory. The factory of the future is a factory without people. Every factory that is now built is a factory without people, because it's repetitive and predictable. We talked about it. That means that we see many people being disrupted out of these industries. Warehousing, same thing. It's repetitive, predictable. We don't need people to do this because it's not effective. If you want to connect the dots, you should leave out people and let technology take over all the dots being connected. And then it needs transportation because we have goods that are produced and we need to send them over the ocean. Then we have IBM Watson, they built a system, and this system has all the harbors, strikes, problems. So you just throw your package in Watson, and they tell you the best route your package should have. And of course, it's shipped by a self-sailing ship. Rolls-Royce, they now built a complete fleet with self-sailing ships, because people break things down, and sailing Boats is something really easy from A to B. We don't need people to do this. So again, we haven't seen any people until now. The supply chain of the future is completely automated. And then it enters a harbor and it has these cranes. And these cranes, they pick up the container. Oh, this is the harbor of Shanghai. This is the biggest harbor of the world. No people, completely automated. And it has a... a container, and this is a smart container, and the container knows exactly what its destination should be. It talks to the tax systems, it talks to security systems. Still, we don't need any people. Technology is there taking this over. And then we have some transportation going on with these self-driving trucks, bringing your products anywhere. Uh, also under the ground, you know, we have these hyperloop-like concepts that go below the ground. Again, no people there. It's just transportation with machines. So that new technology brings complete new strategies on the table. Because if you have these drones picking up products, bringing to our local cities and stations, we don't need harbors, we don't need trains, we don't need lorries. And this is why technology is so amazing. It changes everything. It changes all our business models. And there's only one guy steering the harbor, you know? And he doesn't have to steer because he has AI. 
And I think that's what's happening at the moment. When the world change, then our strategy must change as quickly as the market changes. Is that right? I think it's wrong because we need to go faster. The biggest problem right now is if you see a trend, it takes around five to seven years before the trend is implemented within the organization. Where are we in seven years from now? And where do you think Amazon and Google are in five to six years from now? So this is a completely different era. If it takes five to seven years, we might be bankrupt because our business model is not connecting anymore. You know, and that, that's, that's painful, right? If you want to keep up the fast pace of change, we need new people, we need new skills. And I showed you all kinds of examples about technology and robotics and AI, and this is a wonderful moment. This is the best moment of my presentation. And now I want to show you what happened in education. Are you so excited too? Whoa, I can't wait to show it to you. So, so what happened the last 40 years? You know, I worry. I mean, who fell asleep the last 30, 40 years in education? We have a big problem. We now teach generalists, but we need extreme talents. We need extreme talents with extreme knowledge. We need experts. We need new skills. Within companies, we need new skills. And this is also something important for your children. The first skill we need is passion. We need more passionate people, passionate about the future of logistics. Passionate people, they break the world. Passionate people, they really break things down. We need more passionate people. When you hire people, skill and rank them on passion, critical. Second skill is curiosity. What are they doing? How does it work? Where can I get the figures? What are the results? Can I talk to them? We need more passionate, curious people. If we don't have them, just forget about it. The company of tomorrow, your company of tomorrow, is an ecosystem. You guys will face so many challenges, it's too big. You need to collaborate in, with other parties in order to fix it. That means you need to collaborate with startups. For example, a startup from, from Italy. Uh, you work with two scientists from LA and two people from MIT, Massachusetts, one of the best technical universities on the globe, and they help you to solve this problem. For another problem, you collaborate with two scientists from Europe and maybe four startups from Mexico City because they have the knowledge. The problems and the challenges you guys have might be already solved anywhere on the planet. So the company that builds the best ecosystem will be the winner. I think the success of your company we rely on the ecosystem. So we need an ecosystem designer. This is a role. This is a job. And I want you guys to hire this person as soon as possible. This person finds the right startups, the right companies, and the right individuals who solve the issues. In China, Japan, Russia, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> everywhere in the world, there are universities, there are students, there are professors, there are startups who already solved the problem. The leader of tomorrow, in my opinion, is simply the person who simply asks the best questions. I mean, I'm the leader, but I don't know. Do you know? Do you have questions? Can you help me out? Do you know anyone who can solve this problem? Sorry, guys. Sorry, men. This is about female aspects of leadership. The next 10 years is about other leadership. It's about sensitive leadership. If you want to have those people aboard, if you want to have their friends, you need to be sensitive. And this is actually about the female aspects of leadership in order to build the team we need. This is one, I'm, I, I met him twice. Uh, I mean, I'm really honored. And this is such a new leader. And he says, you know, screw it, let's do it. This is what they think. This is their culture. And he said something wrong. He said, if you take care of your employees, they will take care of your customers and they will take care of your shareholders. Wow. So what is the best workplace? How does the best workplace, how does it look like? Is it a desk, a computer, and a manager? No. 
that's some, a place where people are able to experiment freely, where they get the space and the money and the time to do crazy stuff. This is your future. You will be ripped apart by your colleagues. The CFO will go after you. But this is what I expect from you. From now on, go for it. You guys should go for it. If you do, it will bring your career into a new dimension. It's wonderful. The future is so exciting.